hello year six welcome to your literacy video for friday so before we get started on our literacy work today i just want to quickly remind you that today is the day to do your spelling test so don't forget to do that you can do it on paper if you want to or you can do it on edgeb that's absolutely fine so remember most of you in my spelling set today your rule was the oh sound spelt with an a after a W or a Q and a U. Okay, so remember that if you hear oh in your words, then you probably need to spell it with an A. So have a go, do your spelling test, and then don't forget to take a quick picture for me and send it in. Okay, you can do it on Edshed if you want to, that's absolutely fine, just as long as you do it one way or the other. Okay, so that's your first little task to do for literacy today. Okay, let's move on then to your reading work. So we're still in the same books that we've been in for a while. So your, um, if you've got the train book, we're in this one still. If you've got the monkey book, then you're still in that one. And then we've got word power after that. Okay. So your learning question for today then is, can I answer a range of questions on a test? Pages 22 and 23. Now we've gone through recently, we've done a lesson on retrieval questions. We've done a lesson on inference. We've done some word meaning questions. We've done some finding evidence questions. So today we are doing the full comprehension. And I want you to apply the different things that you have learned throughout this week. OK, so. Your first challenge, though, before we even have a look at our questions is like always to read through both poems really, really carefully. Highlight or underline any words that you're not sure of. Now, these were written quite a long time ago, okay? So, they're probably going to have some quite old-fashioned language in. So, don't worry when you read it if, if it doesn't really make much sense. I'm going to read through each one with you now and explain little things that I might think you need. But then down the bottom, we have got a glossary, and there are quite a few words in our glossary today. So, remember, if you see a word that's got a little star next to it, Go down to the bottom of your glossary and find out what it means. So let's have a read of them together. So the, first of all, it says, Hugh Chesterman was an English poet and writer. He was born in 1884. Sir Walter Scott was born in Scotland in 1771. He wrote novels, poems and plays. Both of these poems focus on night, but Chesterman and Scott have created two very different images in their poems. So we've got one poem about a knight called Sir Nickety Knox, and then we've got one poem about a knight called Lochinvar. Okay, so we're going to read the Sir Nickety Knox one first. Okay, so make sure you're open on page 22 and you're reading along with me. Okay, so Sir Nickety Knox. Sir Nickety Knox was an ancient knight. So old was he that he'd lost his sight. Blind as a mole and slim as a fox and dry and, and dry as a stick was Sir Nickety Knox. His sword and buckler were old and cracked. So was his charger and that's a fact. Now charger has got a little star next to it. So go down to the bottom and it means horse. Okay, so his horse was old as well, just like he was. Thin as a rake from head to hocks. So hocks means rear legs. Okay, so he's very thin. Um, I think that's talking about him. It's talking about him, not the horse. Yeah. Was, the, was this rickety nag of Sir Nickety Knox. Sorry, it's quite hard to say. A wife he had and daughters three. So that means he had three daughters. And all were as old as old as could be. So they're grown up daughters, they're not, not young children. They mended the shirts and darned the socks of that old antiquity, Nickety Knox. So they mended all his shirts and his socks and looked after him. Sir Nickety Knox would fly in a rage if anyone tried to guess his age. So he'd get quite angry if people tried to guess how old he was. He'd mouth and mutter and tear his locks, this very pernickety, nickety knocks. So pernickety down the bottom then means fussy. Okay, so that's Sir Nickety Knocks. Let's have a read of Lochinvar. So it says, oh, young Lochinvar is come out of the west. 
through all the wide border his steed was the best so steed down the bottom means a horse that's being ridden okay and save his good broad's word he weapons he had none he rode all unarmed and he rode all alone okay so faithful in love and so dauntless in war there never was night like the young lucky var okay so dauntless i don't want to go over that one because that is an answer to one of your questions so i don't want to give you an answer so remember if there's a word that you're not sure of and it's meaning that you're struggling to understand what it means then log on to dictionary.com and have a look what it means he stayed not for break so break down the down the bottom means bushes so it doesn't mean what you'd think break means and he stopped not for stone he swam the Esk River where ford there was none, but it, ere he alighted at Netherby Gate. Alighted means he got off his horse. That's where he stopped. The bride had consented. The gallant came late, so the bride had agreed to marry him. For a laggard in love and a dastard in war. So laggard down the bottom means someone who moves slowly. Okay, so if you, if you move slowly in love, then you're going to lose. Okay, so he lost to a coward in war. That's going to help you with one of your questions today. So, for a laggard in love and a dastard in war was to wed the fair Ellen of brave Lochinvar. Okay. So, I am going to go through some of your questions today with you and help you out just because they are written in quite, quite confusing language and I think you might need a little bit of help. So, let's have a look. Question one then says give two differences between the knight Sir Nicotinox and Lochinvar. So I've snipped a little bit of text from each. I'm going to find one difference between them and then I want you to find the other one because the key part of the question is find two differences. So my first difference here so Nicotinox was an ancient knight. I know that ancient means really old. And here, in the first line of this one, it says, Oh, young Lochinvar is come out of the west. So that's one difference straight away. That Sir Nicotinox is old and Lochinvar is young. There you go, that's one difference. I want you to have a read. You might have to read through the rest of the poems to find another difference between the two knights, okay? Question two then, I'm not going to go over this one because we've done all of these things lots recently this week. So remember, onomatopoeia is a sound word like crash, bang, wallop. Personification is when we say something can do something a human can do, but it's not alive. So for example, um, the stars danced in the sky. A metaphor is when we say something is something else. So the stars are a million eyes watching over the city. Yeah, so they are eyes. That's a metaphor. And a simile is when we compare two things using like or as. So your part you've got to look at is slim as a fox. So have a really careful think of which one you need to circle. Number three then says, what does the phrase by a ship in line four suggest about Sir Nickety Knox's appearance? So what do we think he looks like? So let's have a look at this bit. So old was he that he'd lost his sight, blind as a mole and slim as a fox, and dry as a stick was Sir Nickety Knox. So you've got a clue here that he's really, really old, okay? And have a think what a stick looks like. A stick isn't nice and smooth, is it? Have a think what a stick looks like. And have a think what his skin might look like if he's really, really old. Okay, that's your clue for that question. Number four then, we have done before, but it was a while ago, so I'm going to go over it again quickly with you. Number four says, what is the rhyming pattern of Sir Nicotine? So remember, we did this one quite a long time ago when we looked at a poem. Um, 
So remember, read the first line. So the first line is always A. Okay, so that line is A. And we've got knight at the end of that line. So Sir Nicotine Knox was an ancient knight. Now we need to find which one rhymes with knight. Is it the next line or the line after that? So, so old was he that he'd lost his sight. So they rhyme, don't they? Sight and night. So if it rhymes, that's going to be A as well. Okay. So the next one, blind as a mole and slim as a fox. So it doesn't rhyme with sight, so it's not going to be A again. We're going to go to B now. If that bottom one rhymes with B, then it's going to be B as well. Okay. So you do that one and that will give you your answer and then you will just write these letters down on your line. Okay. Number five then, I think you can have a go at this one by yourself because we've done word meaning questions really decently. So remember, go back to the line in the text that has got dauntless in. So you need to go to line five of locking bar, read that sentence again, see if you can work out what it means. Think about the word daunt. If somebody is quite daunted, what do you think that means? And then if you're not sure, log on to dictionary.com and use that to help you write your answer. Number six, then, is quite a complicated, confusing question, so I'm going to do this one with you. Number six, then, says, why was Lochinvar in a hurry to get to Netherby Gate? So, I've snipped the little bit of a verse that you need from the Lochinvar poem. Okay, so it says, he stayed not for break and he stopped not for stone, so he, he wasn't stopping for anybody. He swam the Esk River where ford there was none, but ere, ere he alighted at Netherby Gate. So we know we're in the right bit because we're talking about Netherby Gate. But we want to know why was he in a hurry to get there? So it says the bride had consented. So this is what he was rushing for. That's what he wanted to get there for. The bride. She was waiting for him. She'd agreed to marry him. Okay? So that's your answer for your first part. So for this part of your question, why was Lockevar in a hurry to get to Netherby Gate? Because his bride was waiting for him. Okay. The second part of the sentence question, though, says what happened when he didn't get there in time? Now, this one isn't very clear. But I did quickly go over it when I read the poem at the beginning. So it says here, for a laggard in the mud, so he was too slow. Because remember, down the bottom it says, someone who moves slowly as a laggard. And a dastard in war was to wed the fair Ellen of brave Lochinvar. So he was too slow, so he lost the war and she married somebody else. Not very nice, I know. But that's, that can be your answer for question six. Question seven then, I think you can have a go at by yourself. It says, would you prefer to meet Sir Nickety Knox or Locking Bar? So that's up to you. You can pick either of the knights that you want to meet, um, but then make sure you give a reason why. So have a think. What kind of person is Sir Nickety Knox? What kind of person is Locking Bar? And then use that to help you explain why you'd rather meet one than the other. Okay. So have a good go with your reading. I know some of these texts are really, really tricky. So you might want to break it up and do a couple of questions. Have a break, go on Ed Shed, come back and do a couple more. That's absolutely fine. Okay, whatever works best for you. So that's your reading for today. If you are in the monkey book then, your next text is called animals sorry i've forgotten to put the page number on the board it's page 26 okay so pages 26 and 27 and your learning question is can i answer questions on the text animals so you're not just doing retrieval questions today you've got a little bit of inference in yours as well where you've got to have a really good think about the answer okay so let's have a look at some of your questions together so it's called animals and you've got some different animals, you've got a table, you've got some different animals and then some information about each one. So I think you'll find this text nice and interesting today. Okay, so number one says, which group of animals only eats plants? Now I've highlighted the word of group in this text. 
because it doesn't want an animal that only eats plants, it wants a group of animals. So your answer for this one is going to be in the very top bit of information up here. And I've snipped that bit of information here so we can read it together. It says animals can be put into groups based on what they eat. Herbivores eat plants, carnivores eat meat and other animals. So that is other animals, sorry, the meat is other animals. And omnivores eat both plants and meat. Okay, so you need to use that to help you answer that question. So look for plants, find the bit that says plants, what type of animal, so it's highlighted in blue, which type of, which, sorry, which group of animal only eats plants. Okay. Question two, three, and four then are all quite retrievally, so I think you can go and find those answers in the text. Number five then, I'm going to go over with you. It says, can all birds fly? Explain how you know this from the text. So I've snipped the bits of the text that say fly in them, because that's my key word. Okay, so it says here, I'm a mammal that can fly. Then it says here, I'm a bird, but I can't fly. Okay, so I'm going to need these bits of information to help me write my answer. So remember, you've got two parts to this question. The first part says, can all birds fly? So that's a yes or a no answer. Then it says, explain how you know this from the text. So your answer for this one is going to be here. So you use this to help you. So I'm a bird, but I can't fly. We're talking about an ostrich. So that shows us then, doesn't it, that not all birds can fly. So the answer is going to be no. Oh, one second. So your answer is going to be no. Oh, and then you need to make sure you explain how you know this. So you can say no, because in the text it says, oh, I think I'm a bit too close to my board, because in the text, and then you can copy the part from the text that shows why you know that all birds don't fly. Okay, so in the text it says, and then you can copy this bit. I'm a bird, but I can't fly. Or you can just copy it, write something that says no, because in the text it says that ostriches are a bird, but they can't fly. Okay, so that's explaining how you know that. Number six then is a word meaning question. Number six says, what does the word unique mean? Now I've snipped, I've had a good read through the text and I've found the bit that says unique and it's in the zebra section. And it says here, every zebra in the world is unique because each zebra stripe are a little bit different. So that explains what unique means, okay? So they're unique because the, every stripe is different. There's no two zebras that are the same. So that's your answer. Okay. Last one then, number seven, says give one example of a mammal from the text. What makes an animal a mammal? So here I've snipped the zebra part again and it says I'm a mammal. So your answer to your first bit, give one example of a mammal from the text, could be zebra. Okay. There are other mammals in your text. I think. Yeah, there's another mammal in your text, so you don't have to do zebra. You can find the other one. But here it says, I'm a mammal. I make milk for my babies. So you can use that to help you explain what makes an animal a mammal. Okay? So that's your reading for today. Word power work for today, then. We are moving on to page 27, but we're still blending words together, okay? I really enjoyed reading some, reading through some of your uh, blended words yesterday from your favourite characters. It was brilliant. Okay, so today then, we're carrying on 
and it says make your own nonsense words by blending some of the words below. So remember, these haven't got to be real words. So they've blended tiny and banana to make tinana. Okay, so just like we were doing yesterday when I did Nemo, I blended small and stripy, didn't I, to make smipey. That's a nonsense word. It doesn't mean anything. So you have a go and make three of your own. Then you've got to have a go at drawing or writing about a nonsense plant or animal. Then use blending to give it a funny name. Now I've got my board but I'm sure you could draw a better one than, than that. You can draw a funnier one I'm sure. But I just want to go over with you making a name for it. It hasn't got to be a real name okay so I want you to when you've drawn your plant I want you to have a look and think what does it look like okay so my plant then is a bit silly he's sticking his tongue out so he's silly okay He's spiky because he's a cactus. I know he's a cactus, so I can write that. That's uh, the type of plant he is. Um, I'd say he's quite friendly. He's waving. Okay, so I'm going to say friendly as well. Once I've looked then and I've got some adjectives to describe my plant, I can then start to blend some together to make a word. Okay. So I could blend them together. So let's have a look. So I could start it, so I could mix, I could blend spiky and silly together. So I could call it spilly. So it's a spilly friendus. I'm gonna link friends with cactus. That's the name of my plant. It's a spilly friendus. Okay. So I look forward to seeing some drawings of some plants. The more detail, the better, and you could even colour them in for me. Um, and then I look forward to the name that you come up with for your plant. The bottom bit then says, how would you explain what a blended word is to a younger child? So if you were trying to explain to a reception child what a blended word is, how, how would you explain it? What would you say you've got to do with some words? Okay. So good luck with all of your literacy work for today. Just make sure you try your best. Um, and don't forget to send me some pictures on the email. Have a lovely weekend, everybody, and I will see you on Monday.